And uh, what we do primarily, most of our stuff is, is I, I got this in ball players, football players, and short sprinters. 60 yards. It seems like everyone wants 60 yards. All right, that seems to work best. <clears throat> I'm getting into long distance stuff too. But uh, let's see. We, we did an experiment, took two girls, and this, this, this fascinated uh, Bolts and straight coach and it came up. We took two girls, they go 60 yards with a plate. This is on blacktop. They covered 21 seconds. So we added weight and added weight and got up to 135, approximately their body weight. And they covered it at 17. All right? So then a coach, an ex, an ex the Catholic champion, shows up. 215 pounds. We start him with 90. He covers it at 17. We keep adding weight to 225. He covered 11. Then I was training a girl to sit the Olympic bobsled team. Uh, she's a big girl. She started with 60. Ended up with like a, a same thing, 135, but covered in at 17. So how did they, how did they use more weight in the same walking style, but, but cover the ground faster? Force production. You know, you can only objects in light, uh, light objects in you know, fast flash when they produce so much force. You weigh so much, no matter you or you weigh so much. You and you is only so strong. You can only apply so much force. But op, 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 there's an optimal amount of that sled, basically around body weight, at least on blacktop, that you can produce greater force. If you couldn't produce greater force, you couldn't cover the distance faster. Now this, this amazed him. And so remember I talked about the deceleration phase. It's basically where you're pacing yourself. You know, maybe in a two or a 400 or an 800. Um, we go out and we'll, we will cover, we'll, we'll, start, we'll have a starting line, of course, and we'll go for 60 seconds. And I've seen people go and cover, um, I don't know how far, you know. We'll just say, I don't know, 300 feet. But we repeat it with the same weight, and they have picked up 80 feet in 60 seconds. Now, in other words, if they got here in 60 seconds, the next trip they'll get to here. Then they hear, then they hear. What have we done? We've we eliminated the acceleration phase. And that's what that's what you need. To maintaining that top speed. And um, for an 800 meter runner, I took an 800 meter, a girl that was selling to run it, but she, she had a 214 uh, 800. She walked, a round up it was basically 400 meters, two minutes, 46 seconds. And in nine weeks, she got it down to uh, two minutes and 14 seconds and ran at 208. Took six, six seconds off her 800. This is, um, I would say, above average. It's one I said I qualify for the heptathlon after six years of cut because she had bad coach. But, you know, so she had talent, but not crazy talent. But that's, that's how you do it. And um, so you remember, if you was an 800 and you guys go out and you repeatedly run the same race, you run the same freaking time. How many people go out and try to win a race by strategy? How about just jumping out in front and not loading anybody by catch? How about try that one? Oh, it sounds, oh, Lou, you're crazy. You can't do it. Well, hell, why you tell me why not? Why can't you? I watched a girl last year at the Nationals run a 600, jumped out in front, no one caught her. No one could catch her. She's just too strong. And so that's what you want to do. You work, uh, well, here you go. Like, uh, we'll say you're 800 meter. Remember I talked about the girl going around. We got one now that runs about two, two, uh, two flat, right? Sharp. So you take, a, you take a, a, we'll just say a 45 pound sled, you know, 45 pound blade. You get a time on it. We'll say it's a, we'll just say it's 230. Then a dime, so it's 235. And 20 pounds, you know, the plate and 20 pounds, it's 245. Now you got three numbers to work with at this pace. So it's what I do, remember the weight periodization? You know, you can start with the heavier or lighter, but you can go like, you know, let's say you go 65 next week, 55 next week, 45. All right, and but carry over for three weeks, start it back. So you got three records to achieve 800 meters. Also wonderful things are favorite, you know what safety squat bar is? Walking with the safety squat bar. Or running with the safety squat bar. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? If it, if you blow up your lungs and your and your, all your muscles. Again, use three weights. I mean, like we'll, we'll say you a quarters, a plate, a plate and a quarter. You got these three times. Now you've got six times to break a record. Remember how I tell you we break our record nine, over ninety percent of the time, the entire gym. How would you like every time you go out get a record? Well, every time you go to the parking lot, you find a twenty dollar bill. Every time.
You just walk out, oh, hell, there it is. Right? You're never broke. What does this do to your mental state? You're winning every damn time. So when you go to race, do you think that doesn't carry over to that race? It does. Because it's, it's physical. It's physical and mental. And it breaks the boredom of running around a freaking track every day at the same pace. I, I, I think you must read a little bit. You know what the speed barrier is? I'm sorry? Speed barrier. The speed barrier? Yes. Well, when people run constantly, like a lot of ball players, but they can have me by, you eventually only can run so fast. You run at a certain pace, it cannot run any faster. The only way, now this is the science of sports training, the only way you can run faster is to quit running and do spatial activity. Now people look at me and go, well how's weights, how's jumping, how's all this crap besides running going to make me run? I will tell you how. The science says in the very same book and a hundred other, general exercises have no ill effect on timing, coordination, or, um, uh, or flexibility. It actually enhances all three. So that's what you've got to use spatial Olympic weightlifters in America is clean jerk snatch, right? Clean jerk snatch. Pretty soon they're stuck. They've been stuck for years. So if you keep doing too many clean jerk and snatches, your form breaks down. But if you do, pull, uh, so if your form breaks down, you got to stop, right? You, you, you don't want bad form because you know you can't lift that way. But if you do high pulls and good mornings and spatial squats, and even if your form breaks down, it has no effect on, on the, start, the Olympic lifting coordination. It's, it's, it's a proven fact. That's why my books has got books to take. Read my references inside and go read and see what it says. How do we do it? How do we not squat but got the greatest squatters? How do, we, how do we not do a deadlift and have a top 10 average of 866? Seven women over 500 in meets. How do we, how, it, it would be impossible, see, right? We'd be on the bad end of all this, but we're on the good end of all this. Uh, Pete, can you just mention a few things what you do up there? He primarily trains high school kids? Yeah, high school and college. Just, just real quick, maybe two, three minutes. It's a, you do the same freaking thing, right? Same, same exact program. Yep. Same See, he same works with kids. I don't like kids. <laughs> <laughs> just, just tell them a few things you do. It's just where they get a kind of a, an idea. Um, well, as Lou was saying, um, I guess one of the questions was: Is West Side for kids? I work mostly with younger kids, high school and college, and. Uh, a lot of questions get, well, can you use West Side and use, utilize these methods for, for children? And the answer is absolutely yes, because it is a system. It's all based upon this mathematics. Um, so I get young kids that come in, um, and you know, obviously, if you first come in and we're building that base that he's talking about, that large base of GDP, so a lot of jumping, um, a lot of sled dragging, a lot of types of these things, but you're also teaching them techniques at the same time. So as you're teaching them proper box squat technique, for example, as I took this 11-year-old kid uh, who's now 15 squatted 505 off a 13-inch box by perfecting his technique over the last four years, but it also was raising his strength. So as he was getting better technique, his strength is going up, we're doing all of these uh, special exercises, all of these GPP work. Um, ended up not spending a lot of time on barbell. I did a lot of belt squat, a lot of hamstrings, a lot of jumping. Um, and he's just running, playing football. He did all his running for, for playing football. So the program absolutely works. Um, one, one quick thing, uh, one father took uh, one kid away from me uh, because I wasn't doing any sprint mechanics with him. And he wanted him to do sprint mechanics. I said, well, I don't, I don't do that. The kid needs to get stronger. So uh, I took him away, and this kid stayed with me, kept getting stronger, stronger, stronger. Uh, we went out finally to the field, the football field, run a 40 time, and uh, the other kid was there, said, Coach, can I run with you? He said, sure, why not? So he took his 40 time, and they ended up racing against each other. Uh, the kid who had not run all summer uh, beat him by a full step. Uh, he weighs 200 pounds, squatted 505. Uh, the other kid weighed about 178 pounds um, and beat him by a full step. He's just stronger. And so at the end of the day, the, the strength training had made them faster. We're talking about for sprinting. And spatial exercises can all, perfect yeah, technique. All exercises, can yeah. perfect technique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and squat. That's the, that's the key that people miss. Yeah. The tonic hand strings, bell squat, reverse hyper, a lot of jumping. Um, and for, for a while, for uh, never really had them use a, a straight bar uh, box squat. Did all, all types of special bars. Never, never used a straight bar until he took this 505.
And you understand by this little chart I got here, that like this lady here, if you can squat 200, 300, you could train right beside this guy that can squat 600. As long as you use the mathematics of your maximum squat and he uses his, you'll both make progress. You go to the gym, you always got that one strong guy, right? He keeps making progress, no one else makes any because everybody else tries to over. You can't work with them when they overtrain. But that's why you got to follow this chart. It's all based on speed. Uh, any questions? Uh, do we cover the jumps? We covered it all, right? Oh, just remember, long, like you want to maintain a top pace, just go for long. Hell, how long did uh, uh, Cody, he walked he, a 5K race? Five miles. And how long? An hour. An hour pulling a 45 pound plate, just a fire. <laughs> 40. Uh, you know Cody. Yeah. So you see, that's how you, you've got all these you got all these uh, records to break all the time, and it just all goes straight into running, uh, whatever the hell you do, whatever sport it is. I mean, I worked with, but you name it, I worked with them all. So, any questions? Yes. Yeah. Right, so it should be 72 hours to separate them. Uh, for us, the speed squat day is Friday, max efforts on Monday. And we loop everything on the weekend, well, like a ball game's on the weekend, well, we compete on the weekend, that's why we do it. And we, and we speed bench, we speed squat on Friday, speed bench on Saturday, max ever squat, and dead on Monday. All right, 72 hours difference. And if you look at this chart, remember what I said, if you just go down to the 600 deadlift, it shows you you got to do 7,200 pounds of squats. You know, I mean, you know, the first week you're 300 times 24 lifts is 72, it jumps up a little bit. And then 60%, 360 times 10, 10 doubles, or 20 lifts is 72. See that? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, if you, if, just think of yourself. If you took a, a max squat of six, to break a 605, I, like I read off how I would do it. I make, very, I mean, it's, I make big jumps, and uh, you know, no reps. Uh, two and a quarter for two, 350 for one, four or five for one, 95 for one, then I'd probably go 560, halfway up there. Then 50, then 45 more for a record. I'm done. Hey, and a lot of people, you know, like I bring this gentleman in, and I've had this all the time, and I always say, I, I had world record. They broke over 20 some world records between two guys in the bench, all time world record. And they carried it to, and they put a two and a half on the bar. And they go, uh, they said, this is the plan. They break a record by five pounds. So people say, well, what the hell is five pounds? But if I could break your, your any record you got, five pounds a month at 60 pounds a year you'd be taking me out to dinner wouldn't you just be patient be patient and you want to break record get you in this weightlifting book because they're so backwards um i mean the top weightlifting people in america say i'm right they read my they read my book and they say what i'm saying is right and uh, i say like if you could clean 400 i want you to start my program at 380 and in three weeks 85 give yourself about two months to acquaint yourself to what i'm doing then you hit the four or five for record i'm the rest is history it's if there's a better system i'd be doing it um you know who tutor bump is you know he pretty much stops linear periodization but i gave tutors some equipment for the college up there at york university and i talked to his assistant all the time but he got on the phone and wanted to thank me he goes uh, you know lou since your training's all wrong and i was doing this and I go, well, why do you say that, Tudor? And he said, because I flat load. And remember what I said, like, if you got a bolt, if you, you're, you're pretty baseball, if you squat 400, who can, you know, I don't know, maybe it's enough, I don't know. But all you gotta do is make sure they, they got that kind of strength all year long. And so what I told him was, I said, um, you know, here's how I do it. Like, if you haven't done uh, any glued hams in three weeks when you start, you suck. But in three weeks, you built your volume. You haven't done reverse hypers for three weeks, you suck. In three weeks, you built your volume. We build our volume in these small spatial exercises. If you haven't done any arm, tricep work, in three weeks, you know, if you, you, know, if you do whatever, I don't know, we'll just, I can't, you know, we'll say 2,000 pounds. What if you do 6,000 pounds in three weeks? Your volume's going way up, right where it counts. 